This is the worst start of a month since 2011 and the worst start of December since 1996. What does history tell us about the way these months end, even though December is the most statistically positive month for stocks? But more importantly, we're gonna talk about the Fed's messaging, obviously with FOMC and CPI coming out later this month. Why the Fed, and specifically Jerome Powell at the Brookings Institute speech, was using a more dovish tone, saying that we could see a slowdown in, in rate hikes as early as December. By the way, this is not the first time this year. This also happened back in July, if you guys remember, but most people in the market have a short-term memory. Moral of this video is this is not the time to buy stocks. It will get worse before it gets better, and Fed pivots are not bullish. So the mainstream media needs to stop saying that a Fed pivot is bullish. It is not bullish. So here are the topics for today. Hopefully you guys like the Fresh Prince kid and play look. So topics for today's shenanigans. Hopefully I spelled shenanigans correctly. I think it's a Gaelic word. Any of you Irish or Scottish Gaelic speakers, let me know if I spelled it correctly. Anyway, the worst start of the month since 2011 and the worst start of December since 1996. We'll go over those stats. We're also going to go over the Fed's messaging and why it is a deliberate attempt to manipulate the market, not the market that you're thinking of. And the treasury market is broken. Every single yield curve seems inverted. The 10-year and three-month yield curve is the most inv inverted ever. The 10-year, two-month is the most inverted in since the 1980s. And why this is not the time to buy stocks. We will be looking at stats. We will be looking at data. And I, as you know on this channel, even if you we don't look at stats and data, you know that buying stocks when the VIX is low, especially when the market is at resistance, is not an optimal buy. The time to buy, if you were going to buy, was back in October. And yes, we did alert this in the Academy as well, twice in October, October 4th and October 14th is when we made our last major buys in the stock market. Then we will discuss why Fed pivots are not bullish. They are actually some of the most bearish events that we have in the stock market. They are not bullish. I wish the mainstream media would stop saying that. And then of course, because it is Thursday, technically this is TA Thursday, we will go over the charts. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So as I stated at the outset, this is the worst start of the month for the S&P 500 going all the way back to 2011. And that month was in June. Let's see what happened in June 2011. Now, this is important because December is statistically the best month for stocks, or at least in the top two, depending on which index you look at and which metric you look at. But in June 2011, the month ended negative 2%. Now, in terms of Decembers, as I said, you have to go all the way back to 1996 because Decembers are genuinely good months for stocks. And if we go all the way back to December 1996, you will see that actually this was pretty much the only red month in 1996 was in December, aside from July, and that December ended up almost minus 3%. So we are off to a pretty bad start with the first five trading days being red, and we had some relief today as of the time of this recording. Now, this is particularly important because let me pull up the indicator showing the FOMC and CPI dates. Yellow is the CPI, blue is the FOMC. We have this coming up December 13th and December 14th. And so what is going to happen here? Are we going to rally into those uh, dates? Are we going to trade sideways and then see what happens? Last month, we finally got an inflation reading of less than 8%. It was 7.7%. And we are expected, the consensus expectation is 7.6% for this CPI. So if we come in lower than expected, the market could actually see a little rally towards the end of the year, especially if the Fed looks at that and says, okay, that is reason enough to do a 50 basis point rate hike as opposed to a 75 basis point rate hike. However, if CPI comes in crazy, then the Fed will likely have to do another 75 basis point rate hike. And speaking of the Fed, let's talk about the Fed's messaging. On November 2nd, Jerome Powell sounded like the biggest hawk on planet Earth. But then on November 30th, the Brookings Institute, he had a smile on his face. He said that they might look at December as early as December to start not cutting rates, but cutting the rate of hikes, meaning instead of doing a 75 basis point rate hike, 
doing less than that. Of course, he's going to be looking at the CPI data on December 13th. But the reason that he's doing that is because the bond market is utterly broken right now. Remember, the bond market is a lot bigger than the stock market. And right now it is facing illiquidity concerns. And just as of recently, the Fed actually put on its blog saying that the treasury market's illiquidity remains a concern. We've talked about this countless times on this channel. And this comes at a tough time, especially as the Fed started shrinking its balance sheet earlier this year. And they haven't even really scratched the surface on the shrinkage of that balance sheet. There's $9 trillion to shrink. They are trying to shrink as much as $2 trillion in the next year. This is why virtually every single yield curve right now is inverted, especially the important ones that normally signal recessions. The 10-year, two-year is the lowest it's been since 1980, the 10-year three-month is the lowest it's ever been in history. We've never seen a 10-year three-month inverted yield curve this low. And an inverted yield curve means that the shorter term treasuries are paying more than the longer term ones. And that is because of illiquidity a lack of demand for shorter term treasuries. The only treasuries that bond investors are buying are longer dated ones. So in my opinion, what Jerome Powell was trying to do when he sounded a little bit dovish was he was trying to set expectations for rates, not really boost the stock market. I don't think he cares as much about the stock market as he does about the treasury market. The treasury market is the backbone of the US financial system. Without the treasury market's liquidity, that's when holes start becoming uncovered in our financial system. That's when leverage starts getting untangled. That's when problems start arising is when there's illiquidity in the treasury markets. So you have to ask yourself, when you look at the S&P 500 chart, that little rally that we saw on November 30th after the dovish speech, is that enough to start buying risk? Because remember, equities are some of the most risky assets on the market. So is that enough to start buying risk, especially if bond investors are signaling that things are still going to get worse as we look at these inverted yield curves? More on that when we get into the topic of buying stocks and charts. This is one of the reasons why I said it's not the time to buy stocks. And as a matter of fact, we actually went short here. For those of you that are fans of this channel, you know we've been eyeing this level for months, really. We actually went short here. We started buying stocks between October 4th, a tad bit early, didn't catch the absolute bottom, and October 14th, which was near the bottom. That's when we started buying stocks. Reason being, not because I think that's the bottom, but because we made a new low and the VIX was elevated. We also shorted individual stock names here. Now I ended up closing those shorts because we have a bunch of binary events coming up. We have PPI, CPI, FOMC, and we made a lot of money on those shorts. So in my view, I'm okay taking profits here in case we see a little rally due to better than expected inflation numbers. However, I did post my entire analysis this morning here as well. And I will be going over a lot of this stuff in our next mastermind call, which is this Saturday. I'm going to be talking about how to draw supply and demand, how to trade zero DTE options, how to pick option expiration dates depending on the strategy, an introduction to futures trading, and we also have another mastermind next week. And good news, if you made it this far in the video, I'm opening that up to the public. You will see a link in the description. You definitely want to join this as spots will fill up fast. And once they're capped, we can no longer accept more people. So if you want to join our next mastermind, link is in the description below. If you're interested in knowing what the Academy is all about, you're interested in the way that we trade and do analysis, Link is in the description. It's absolutely free. And if you want access to all of our alerts and analysis, that link is in the description. Book a call with one of our ambassadors and they will take care of you. All right, I mentioned the VIX. Another reason not to buy stocks is traditionally you don't buy stocks when the VIX is bottoming out, especially if the S&P 500 is at resistance. Look at this divergence here. It's almost an inverse chart. The, the uh, VIX is at support and the S&P is at resistance. I did end up buying calls on the VIX as a hedge as well. The VIX is up 17% this week, and it looks like it has a lot more room to fly. This is obviously dependent on some of the economic data that we get in the short term. But in general, the time to buy stocks is when the VIX is elevated, not when the VIX is down. 
If you only isolated yourself to buying stocks when the VIX is above 40, look at your returns across almost every single sector in the market. Also, a thing to consider that we haven't seen yet is forward EPS declines, right? The rate hikes and the quantitative tightening, they are really lagging instruments. So it takes time for those to actually hit the market. But just now you are seeing a bunch of layoffs across the board. Mega cap stocks or mega cap companies are even doing mass layoffs. And we are seeing revised guidance just right now in Q4 2022, revised guidance on earnings, but it's we are just scratching the surface. So if we are expecting a larger recession, because that is what the Fed is trying to engineer, they want unemployment to go up and they want spending to go down so that they can actually control inflation. Unfortunately, the result of that is less spending, less earnings, et cetera. So the estimates for the S&P 500 is that we will reach a level where the EPS forecast is around 231. That puts the S&P PE multiple at around 14 and will likely take us to somewhere in the 3,000 to 3,200 level on the S&P 500. Remember that the Fed cannot stop hiking rates until the Fed funds rate actually gets above CPI. Right now, we're still heavily in the negative, and inflation has to come down while the Fed of effective, the Fed funds rate goes up so that the Fed funds rate is above CPI. The Fed funds rate cannot remain below CPI, which is where it's at now, which is why we're still heavily negative. So there is a long time to go for this. In other words, it will get worse. All right, when it finally gets better, what happens when the Fed pivots? Well, the Fed pivoting is not a bullish event. It is actually a bearish event. Look at it by almost every single metric. Here is what happens when the Fed actually pivots. Almost every single time it is negative and it is significantly negative. We're not talking about single digit percentage points here. And it actually takes a long time from when the Fed institutes its first cut to the S&P 500 low. The average is 200 days after the Fed actually cuts to when the S&P 500 sees its low. Now, why is that? You might say to yourself, well, I thought Fed cuts were actually bullish. Well, no, it's because the Fed is not going to stop until the job is done or until the job is near done. Job's not finished. So that is why I was saying that the, the, not only is the Fed messaging dishonest, but also the way that the financial media is talking about Fed cuts as if, as if it's some sort of magic bullet event. It is not. Here's another chart showing why Fed pivots are not bullish. By the time the Fed actually tightens, shit has hit the fan. This right here, this green line here, is the S&P 500 forward earnings per share, what we just talked about when the forward EPS actually sees a decline due to lower spending, higher unemployment, et cetera. So the Fed doesn't actually pivot until shit hits the fan. But I've talked about this before in terms of trades. When the Fed actually pivots, it's a lot easier to play the treasuries, specifically the two-year treasury yield, which is the one tied to the federal funds rate, not the 10-year. A lot of people think about the 10-year. That's the one that's talked about in the media because that is the one that corporations use usually in discounted cash flow models. That is what's used when determining mortgage rates and car loan rates. But the two year treasury yield is actually what is tied the closest to the Fed funds rate. It moves the most uh, when the Fed announces policy. So when the Fed actually pivots, every single time you see in light blue here, the two year treasury yield tank. And so you can actually long the two-year treasury futures because remember, treasury yields and treasury prices actually move inversely. So if the treasury yield is tanking, you actually want to be long the treasury prices. So two-year treasury note futures is, a, a, in my view, a very easy trade at that point, and I will likely go very heavy there. Of course, I will be announcing that in the academy as well, but I think we are far, far away from an actual Fed pivot, meaning a Fed, the Fed actually cutting rates, not just slowing down, but cutting rates. And lastly, let's take a look at some charts. We'll start with the S&P 500. I've showed this before, but we are in a major downtrend. Obviously, this right here is the VIX on the right. We can take that out. But we are in a major downtrend. We shorted this pretty heavily. 
was able to get out for profit before the binary events. But I do think eventually we make a lower low and visit at least the pre-COVID highs here on the S&P 500. You have to think with keeping rates higher for longer, with the forward EPS drawdowns, with higher unemployment, with lower GDP, we are going to see a lower S&P 500 in my view. The only way that doesn't happen is if inflation miraculously comes down to 2% very soon, but it can't get there without the Fed being aggressive, whether that is continuing to hike or keeping it high for longer, both of which are actually very suppressing to the economy and to the market as a result. Now we are getting the FOMC and CPI right as the S&P 500 is hitting this resistance. So is it possible that we can break through this and break this downtrend? Yeah, of course it's possible. Imagine if the CPI comes in lower than 7.6. Imagine if the Fed actually does less than 75 basis point rate hikes. We could see a massive short-term rally here. But with unemployment still low, with wages still growing, with prices still elevated, and with the Fed vowing to keep rates higher for longer, is that really a situation in which you want to invest in risk? Again, if the VIX pops, and we revisit lows or make newer lows, yeah, for me, that is a signal to buy, but I'm not buying here. I already did my buying back in October. Anyway, traders, that is it for this video. Again, if you want to join the absolutely free webinar, we're opening it up to the public for free for the first time ever. This is not gonna be this Saturday, it's going to be next Saturday. We're going to go over a whole host of topics, both in terms of trading, options, futures, technical analysis, whatever questions you have as well, it will be an open forum. You definitely want to join that. It is absolutely free. It will be capped. Make sure you take advantage of it and sign up here. You will see the link in the description below. If you get anything out of this video, leave it a big fat thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think that the CPI is going to come in lower or higher? Also, are you in cash? What did you start investing in? When did you start investing? Curious to hear from you guys. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, stay safe out there traders, peace.